Hey, what's up guys? This is Richard again for another edition of Learning with Rich. So for today's lesson, I'm going to talk about Revit MEP. I also have videos about Revit architecture. You can check out the list of my videos on my YouTube channel. But for today, I'm going to talk about Revit MEP. Okay, so I'm going to discuss about the user interface first of Revit MEP. Now, the first time you open, let's get started. The first time you open your Revit, the first window that you'll be seeing here right now, just like my window, you call this recent files window. So every time you launch Revit MEP, a startup window named recent files is displayed. So this window provides links to recently opened project or family files like this one so this is my recently opened projects or created projects and this is also my recently created or opened families okay so this window is what you call recent files window now i'm going to open a sample project to further explore the user interface of Revit MEP i'm gonna open this Okay, so this video is very useful, especially if you're just starting using Revit MEP on your job or on your projects. Okay, now, so let us identify the primary user interface elements of Revit MEP. Okay, the big R that you're seeing right here on the upper left corner, this is what we call the application button. It opens the application's menu that provides access to common tools such as save, print, and publish. So if I click this, so you'll be able to see that uh, links, okay, or these tools that we commonly use in doing project or using Revit. Okay, not only on Revit MEP, but also on Revit architecture and Revit structure. So this portion is what you call application button. Now, you see this portion, this one, all right? So we call these tabs, ribbon tab. So it contains tools, settings, and standard functions. And only one tab can be active at a time. And the active tab is always on the top, right? Like this one, right? So if I click, for example, architecture, you'll be able to see here the tools for architecture, structure and systems which is what we are going to use later on on the next uh, video that i will be creating okay so we'll be using these tools because these are the tools for revit mep so aside from that you also have insert annotate tab analyze tab blah 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 okay so this portion of revit is what we call ribbon tabs okay so just below your ribbon tab this portion is what we call panels okay so this portion is what we call panels so group but uh, groups of buttons for similar functions and tools like for example hvac panel so you can see here the tools that we are using for hvac okay so we call this ribbon tab so we call this ribbon panel okay groups buttons for similar functions and tools like for example this is for hvac this is for plumbing and piping this is for your electrical okay so these are the tools for my electrical for the plumbing and piping fabrication mechanical settings or equipments and this is my hvac tools here so we call these panels and then as you notice some of the tool here has this arrow okay so this arrow so we call this split button so split or uh, up split button it opens a drop down with actions for the particular tool like for example for the device so i call this device split button why because you see there's an arrow if you click this so you will see uh, these different tools here okay and also component so if I click the component, you will see here the different tools. Place a component, model in place. Okay? So we call that a split button. So it opens a drop down with actions for the particular tool. Okay? So these are the uh, ordinary button here. Okay? So this is what we call split button. Okay? 
Now, aside from that, some of the panels here on our systems tab, you see there's an arrow that is pointing to the lower right corner, okay, just on the right side of the panel name. Like for example, the plumbing and piping, see there's an arrow. Okay, so we call this as dialog launcher. So if I click this dialog launcher, it opens a dialog box, right? You see, if I click that, it opens the mechanical settings dialog box. So same with my electrical. Elec my electrical panel also has this dialog launcher. So if I click this, it opens the electrical settings dialog box. Alright? So every time you see a panel that has this arrow, so you call that dialog launcher. Not only on your systems, if I go to the structure, there's also the uh, there's also dialog launcher. Okay, which is very useful in setting up the settings of your project. Okay. So aside from that, let me move on to another tab. Let's say I go to the uh, annotate. Okay, so if I go to the annotate tab, you will see there the panel name again and there's a drop down arrow below pointing below the other one is this one right which is the dialog launcher so if you see a panel name with this arrow beside on it this is what we call expanded panel dimension expanded panel so if i click this as you can see it expands a panel to display available actions and is indicated by an arrow next to the panel right this one Okay, so you can temporarily pin an open expanded panel. Like if I click this, you see there's a pin here, right? So if I put my pointer back to the drawing area, you will notice it will not uh, disappear. It will not be hidden. Why? Because it's pin. Okay, so you can pin that and also you can unpin it. Just click again and then just put back again your pointer here and then it will be hidden now. So that is what you call expanded panel. Okay. Next, on the right uh, right side of your user interface, so you can see this portion here. This is what we call project browser, which is one of the very important user interface or part of the Revit. Okay. Why? Because project browser. Uh, you can think of as the table of contents of your project because it uh, shows you here all the views, schedules, sheets, and families on the current project that you are working on. Okay, so it displays a tree view of a logical hierarchy of all views, schedules, sheets, and families in the current project. Okay, so aside from the project browser, You also have this uh, status bar. So it displays the name of the family and element type when you position the cursor over an object. Okay, so this is what we call the status bar. It displays tips or hints when you use a comment. Okay? So aside from the status bar, <coughs> Okay, so aside from the status bar, you also have this portion here, which is what we call the view control bar. It provides shortcuts to commonly used view commands such as the scale or model graphics display, like the visual style. Okay, so this part of the user inter uh, interface is what we call the view control bar. Alright, you can still follow. Project browser, status bar, view control bar. And of course, this is our view window, okay? Or our drawing area, or our design area. Okay, so we call this, another term, we call this as view window. So aside from that, we also have this portion here, which is the navigation bar. Okay, this navigation bar, in case you close it accidentally or unknowingly, you can still access that by going to the view tab, user interface, and then you will see here your navigation bar. You can actually turn on and turn off also here your 
project browser in case you close the project browser accidentally you can just check it here or uncheck if you want okay so we call this navigation bar this is our view cube it works as an orientation con uh, works as an orientation control for 3d views so that is only for 3d views Okay, so this portion, if you click, you will see the applications menu. So we call this application menu. Provides access to many common file actions. You can also access advanced options such as export, publish to manage the files. So aside from the application menu, you also have this portion here, which is what we call the quick access toolbar. So the quick access toolbar displays the commonly used actions such as undo, redo, changes, which you can use on these files. So you can customize the default quick access toolbar by adding tools from the ribbon. Like for example, if I go to the systems, if I want to add the dock here on my quick access toolbar, all I have to do is to right click the dock and add to quick access toolbar. Just click that, right, just right click and then click. So it will now be added here. Right. Okay. That would be all. On the next edition of Learning with Rich, I'm going to show you the other user interface that we can use in Revit MEP. So until then, take care.